Well, now I can start working on my magma mine. Okay. Oh, did, did oh right, you did have a card yeah, in your hand. Nice. Um, sweet. So, let's see. It's four eight. Um, I don't actually need the additional forest, so I'm gonna spend eight and then sacrifice oh, and then sacrifice a forest uh, using my squandered resources to generate an additional green in order to cast Tekka's Dragon. <laughs> really? Yep. I hard cast. Really? I hard cast and catch a uh, Decca's dragon. Well, why would you do that? <laughs> um, dude, <laughs> dude. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, I end. <laughs> you should. <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to work hard for this. Uh, dude, I okay. Uh, um, I need uh, one of my drain lives is at the bottom of my deck. The other drain lives in my hand. So I have to, uh, so I have to go through the entirety of my deck in order to kill uh, um, uh, Ali from Cairo, and then you uh, generate enough resources uh, uh, against a fairy's puzzle box in order to kill you with drain life. Or have you uh, or have you kill yourself with uh, with the witches? Because. Uh, I don't have an answer for I don't have an answer for uh, Ali from Cairo. Rub the magic genie lamp. I wish for a dragon. And boom, the genie granted my wish. All right, so now I got that going on for me. Uh, Tika's dragon has summoning sickness yep. because it because I just gained control of it and it does not gain haste. Um. I am going to pay two to cast a Skulking Ghost. And then I'm going to swing into you for one with the Witches. Okay, I'll take one. Alright. <laughs> I end my turn. Can you kill Aladdin in order to regain control of the dragon? Uh, probably not. Okay, and then one, two. Ooh. I mean, I can do that, but... No real point in doing that is the problem. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, oh well. Mm. Alright, I'm gonna cast Choking Sands on your desert. Destroy target non-swamp land. If that land is a non-basic land, Choking Sands deals two damage to that creature's controller. Nice. All right, my desert has been destroyed. Hmm. It's funny how the the, the sands choked out the sands. All right, I will end. Too much sand. All right, and from here, looks like I got mate in two. But can I make it mate in one? <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, I can actually... Just about make it mate in one. I just have to count how much damage I have on the board right now. I got one, two, I'm cutting nine, seven. But... Yeah, looks like I win the game, baby. Because I can pay four to cast the Volcanic Dragon, of course, by giving control of it to you. Hey, Volcanic the Dragon. The surest way. Volcanic Dragon is unaffected by summoning sickness. Yep. Swing for 13. Mm. All right. Uh, and I will take 13. And then I will use my Cadaverous Bloom, exiling, uh, exiling my Jews and Jin in order to gain two black mana. And then, because the game is now over, and Aladdin had taken control of an artifact, artifact is returned when Aladdin is removed from play or when the game ends. So here's your dragon back. Yay! <laughs> Because I actually have to stipulate, like, okay, game's over. Can can I have my card back, please? <sighs> please. <laughs> you didn't say no, right, Auntie. <laughs> so we are technically at one uh, one one zero one. Do you want? That means that the the the, ma the match is a draw. Oh, okay. The, the, the match ma the is match a draw. The match is over. Nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> It's a it's a rocket rabbit unprecedented event that a Magic the Gathering exploration has not decided a decisive winner. Eh. I'm actually very happy with that because to be perfectly <laughs> uh, I would like to show off some of the other stuff that uh, I didn't quite get to play. All right. Oh sure. So, um 
I I really actually like this. Uh, us actually attempting to orchestrate what the, an Arabian an Arabian night block would have looked like. Um, I'm kind of confused that that, uh, that volcanic dragon is in there, but <clears throat> he I think volcanic dragon. Let, let me see where volcanic volcanic dragon was a mirage expansion ah, okay. edition. And uh, is that is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, these uh, these uh, these are the only cards that I didn't actually get to play. I, I held on to early harvest uh, early um, uh, during game one for quite a long time. Um, I was I'm not entirely uh, happy that I actually was trying to run Grim Feast mostly because I wasn't actually killing your creatures with uh, with uh, uh, sorceries or instants all that often. But uh, and. Uh, 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 Popper's Cage. I'm kind of surprised that you weren't running Popper's Cage, actually. What? What is... What is? I, I gotta read what Popper's Cage is. At end of target opponent's upkeep, if that player has two or fewer cards in hand, Popper's Cage deals two damage to him or her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get it. Just... It's very passive. It is very passive, but you know, it's a great answer to aggro. And, you know, you, you know me. I pretty much always play aggro. Because yeah. aggro is simple. Let's see what you got here. Yeah. Withering Bloom. Um, ooh, a black counter spell. Nice. I did notice that while going through while, while going through there. There's City in a Bottle. Um, unfortunately, City in the I'm Bottle city wouldn't have affected bottle. me all that much except for Stone Throwing Devils, I think. Uh, I'm not entirely... Because I had to uh, go and uh, rebuild Cody's Eldrazi recently in order to do uh, draw testing on that, I've got all my sets uh, 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 re- uh, uh, re-enabled, so I can't tell what all the stuff I have that is currently just uh, just from Arabian Nights, except for I think so. Devils. So the only card that would have been an object of confusion would have been the Sandstorm, because the Sandstorm did originally appear in Arabian Nights, and then it got reprinted for Mirage. Okay. What, one one of the two, or Mirage or Visions. I thought you were running City in a Bottle because you weren't running that many cards originally printed in Arabia. Nah, Nights. man. City in the Bottle is an is a very interesting card. Uh, it's a very interesting card design. Unfortunately, going through uh, going through the block that we made, it became very obvious that our, uh, the Arabian Nights critters were not really going to be the uh, star focus here. Oh, oh, totally. Because I mean, let let's face it. Like, like Magic: The Gathering has come a a universe away from where it was in 1994 with the Arabian Nights expansion. Because not only did Power Creep become a real force to be reckoned with, they also had made the cards easier to read and understand. But you'd think that with the precedent set in Arabian Nights, that every fucking set would have its own city in a bottle. Ah, uh, no. The whole reason, uh, city in the bottle is most certainly here be, uh, thanks to the uh, connection it's got to Arabian Nights. The thing is, we actually have a uh, in a, an in universe city in the bottle as of like 2001 or so. Um, uh, the uh, plane of Zephyr uh, that that Tefiri locks away. Although it is now the plane of Mirrodin that uh, no 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 it's the plane of um, Phyrexia that uh, Zephyri switched places with Zephyr so so what you could just pick any expansion and then prohibit cards from that expansion not really I mean Teferi is able to do it but uh, he uh, he is a special he's a special time space wizard so <laughs> space wizard mm. so which of the three sets had Necrotol in it. That would be Visions. And then Necrotol did eventually get a reprint in a much later yeah, set. Yeah, Necrotol is actually extremely uh, is extremely well remembered. Um, I liked going through this, to be perfectly honest. I knew right away that I uh, I knew right away that I was going to be running the Juzim Gym because you know a uh, five five for four it just screams actual value, despite the fact that I think I only hit you once with the damn thing. Yeah, which is which is fine, and that was that was the game that you won. Just goes to show that Genie granted your wish. Like I wish I could win the game. Done. <laughs> yeah, quicksand, uh, quicksand uh, ends up getting uh, reprinted. A, a lot of these actually end up getting reprinted. I don't think Phyrexian Purge did though, because uh, it's still got the Mirage Watermark um, on, on on Maya screen. I 
Yeah. Was there any reason, well, the big reason why you wouldn't have casted Phyrexian Purge on me is because you were either winning or didn't want to spend nine life to kill shit. Yeah, it's just, it's a very costly ability. You don't want to pay three life and four mana just to kill one creature. You would much rather use, like, like freaking uh, bone splinters or something. You pay one mana and some other little costs, and you destroy it, and you kill a creature. Mm, aristocrat. It is, it is nice. It is nice that they give you the option to select an unlimited number of targets. Just, you have to pay three life for each target, including the first. Mm-hmm. And then there was the Infernal Contract, which I almost got to play, but I did not have the third black mana in order to ah. do it. It's a card that you can only use as long as you have more than one life point. Yep. Which is nice. Mind you, uh, if you had ever gotten yourself down to one life, I, I was likely going to win with uh, my Ifrit's, because I'm actually running uh, four of the Ifrit and four of the Jinn. Indeed. Mm. But yeah, this uh, this was fun. Uh, anything uh, that you want to add to this, Mr. Cloud? Uh, we I think we've we've just about uh, we, we've just we've just about closed the book on the, on yet another tale of Arabian Nights. We show we show the gin. We I didn't get to play City in a Bottle, which would have been cool. I'm I'm actually dead curious as to why they reprinted this card because it is such a goddamn weird ability. I don't. I don't think there. I, I can't think of a single other card in Magic: The Gathering that actually refers to other cards by the expansion in which they I appear. I think one of the unhint, one of the unsets does it, but uh, that oh, yeah. that would be it. <laughs> right, like you know, tongue in cheek. This is a very tongue in cheek card. Like marked from birth. <laughs> All right. So with that, we we have successfully explored our uh, fake. Uh, our fake block. Uh, it was Arabian Nights, Visions, and Mirage. Uh, I like a lot of Arabian the stuff that's here. Arabian Nights. <laughs> like Arabian Days. <laughs> Dude, that that theme song for the... Do you remember the Aladdin animated cartoon? Not really. I mean, I remember like two episodes from it. It, uh, it is actually a relatively good action-adventure show. And that theme song yeah. is really fucking kick-ass. Um... But, uh, attempting to get back on topic, I like doing this. I like seeing a lot of these cards interact together, and uh, yeah, uh, I hope that eventually we'll be able to formulate our own blocks uh, again at some point. It's not the next thing that we're doing. I know what the next thing we're doing is, despite how complicated it's going to be, because I get to pick what we're doing next. Is it possible that Rocky Rabbit is becoming bored with magic? Tune in next week and find out. Uh, <laughs> dude, we're going to be, you know, posting this up for more than a month. <laughs> mm. All right, everyone. Be safe. Have yourselves a great day, everyone.